Hey there, so today we have another review, and this is a beer from Almanac. Uh, I haven't reviewed Almanac beer in a minute, but um, sorry, you can skip the review ahead, but Almanac, <laughs> again, this goes back to history. Almanac was a um, well-known sour brewery when I got into beer. Um, they were doing these like funny, what, three, seven, five, like tiny little Belgian bottles. Uh, yeah, doing fun stuff. And, you know, part of the mixed fer fermentation, sour program things that we know about now, but they were definitely important. And um, I guess they've expanded now. I'm for sure they've expanded now. They're doing hazy now. But uh, I remember, hell, I remember even like, oh, we're talking about four, five, yeah, four, four years ago. Um, I, I was at working at, uh, uh, Deck and Nails in Mamaroneck and the retailer that was attached with, you know, one of the biggest beer stores in New York. Um, it's like, is, Almanac, is is there anything cheaper than like Almanac for mixed fermentation stuff? Because you're selling those for like eight, nine dollars versus like we're, you know, Cascades were thirty dollars and all these other beers are so much more expensive. Like the Firestone Sour beers were like 15, 16, 20, um, something like that. So um, anyway, Almanac, important brewery um, based out of uh, Bay Area, San Francisco, Almeida, California. Alameda. Um, anyway, this is called the Inclusion Beer Project. So this includes uh, Common Space Brewery, don't know them, Roses, and uh, Temescal Brewery. So uh, what is this? This is a series of collaboration. Do, 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 uh, community created a DE&I committee with it, uh, within their brewery regardless of size. Uh, more breweries committed to diversity, equality, and inclusion in the workplace. So yeah, there's a good purpose in this and um, started by the Bay Area area. So really cool. So uh, they, they're doing Hazy's now. They're doing all kinds of stuff, but Hazy is something they're doing now. So I don't think I've had an almond of Hazy. Anyway, fresh. A month fresh, Hazy, double dry hopped, Mutare, and Simcoe. I mean, famous OG, Sour Brewery, now doing Hazy's. I mean, that's where we live in. Beautiful label, um, support the wonderful stuff they're doing, um, collaboration, cool stuff. Uh, beer is pretty, very pretty actually. Uh, medium gold color, like that pretty haze that's like not completely opaque, but just nicely hazy and like a medium plus haze to it. Uh, wonderful white head. Yeah, nothing crazy, right? Nothing crazy. That just, oh yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting some really nice happy notes. So, so it's not blowing your uh, nose off, but Really nice nose. Um, it's got this like gooseberry thing. Mutare, what is Mutare? I don't even know Mutare. So it's got this like um, Nelson thing going on. It's really nice white grape, uh, Sauvignon Blanc character. Gooseberries for sure. <sighs> Simcoe's in there too, huh? It's that fruity Simcoe probably and a little bit dank on the back end. It's got um, shoot, uh, lime zest. But mostly like yellow and white. So like I'm thinking of um, like kumquats. Ooh, pretty nice nose. Uh, more, a little bit cold. Yeah. I think it would actually have a better nose as it warmed up a little bit more. I'd have a little bit warmed up, but cheers. Mm, that's a pretty one. Yeah. Really nice and light for 6 1. Um, not a super fat hazy, but a really drinkable, nice one. Wow. That was good. Reminds me of the best examples of those, like, not East Coast meets West Coast, but, like, sort of the, yeah, the thinner kind of, like, not fat, like, uh, Hot Butcher's Fat, um, Gastrillium, and, you know, some of the other breweries where they're, like, super chunky and, like, super high residual sweetness, which I like, but this is really good. Uh, yeah, it's super drinkable. It just works. I mean, it gets pretty high notes, um, just like the nose. Again, like um, orange peel, white grapefruit, um, more of that Sauvignon Blanc, Blanc character, but like not too intense, not super dial heavy. Um, kumquats for sure, star fruit, these exotic, pretty, like light fruits. A little bit of like light, kind of like white peach in there too. Ooh, but it's like, it's not like blow your face kind of like, it's like sitting in there with these really nice subtleties. Um, nice, just crackery malt in the middle. Uh, doesn't have any of the off flavors, like the, the stringency or the chalkiness, just like clean. Hmm. I mean, I wish more breweries did this. Well, I mean, if you're not a hazy or New England person, like 
you can't argue that it's bad. Like it's dry, clean, without the bitterness, you know, the crystal malt, but it's fruity up front, without that stickily sweetness, I think of on chew and like, you know, coin quality that, you know, comes with New England IPAs, especially some of them I like, some of them, you know, I don't, but man, this does so much goodness with the greatness with the hops. Well, mm. where's Simcoe sitting here? As I drink it more, I get more grape character. It's like, I like white grape peel and like, like the vineyards is quite intense on this guy. And then, yeah, the Simcoe is a pretty, um, pretty version of Simcoe. Simcoe can be very catty, uh, dank. Um, catty, I mean, like literally like cat pee and pine and, and marijuana. Here it's like those pretty fruit flavors you can get from Simcoe. Um, some beers I get Simcoe, I'm like, whoa, I know Simcoe can do this. And Simcoe can do it, I guess, with Muterra. Um, wow, that is fantastic. Super drinkable, super nice, just like, light um reminds me i guess he'll i mean i'm uh, sorry uh, alchemist is like more dank but i don't know exactly what i compare this to i always try to describe for you guys like you know analogies and i don't know this is just like almost his own animal it's got this like nice dryness to it but the really just intense hopping up front and sits at six percent really nice and I, I man i can't imagine how good this guy would be at like sevens and five with like a little bit more sweetness a little bit more intensity that'd be just like mind-blowing but wow that is good yeah that is mm. i like the uniqueness of it because it does have this nice kind of like again it's just somewhat watery which is good like um you want that lager sometime but like here like our drinkability is so good and the malt doesn't get in the way I'm running in that chalkiness again, the stringency. Excuse me. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Grapefruit. A lot of grapefruit. And then you get this little bit of like, yeah, peachy, almost like, uh, what, what is that flavor? Um, um, not Bing cherries, but like those crunchy, um, I don't know what they're called. Anyway, there's, there, there's cherries that are like pinkish that are maybe not fully ripened. I don't know what they're called. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a cherry you can bite into that has a crunch to it that's not fully like sweet and, and marinated of fruit flavor, but like pretty, so like stone fruit. Mm. That's so good. That's so drinkable. Um, I'm gonna go with a solid 97. 97. I'll get back this guy. 97, 97, that is Inclusion Beer Project from Almanac. That is so good. Highly recommend it. Get it fresh. This is crazy good. Uh, again, plays a game of somewhat hazy with all the hopping and all that cool stuff, but like doesn't play the chalky astringency or the uh, chunky sweet coin thing. Just does all very good. Uh, well, great, great. <laughs> well, uh, 97, that is so good. Until next time, guys. Cheers later.